I'm going to go over some details here concerning the propulsion system I gave in reactionless UFO propulsion that were not adequately covered. I accept that we are being visited by aliens and that travel between stars is virtually impossible if the conservation laws are absolute. Therefore, I have no recourse but to speculate that these laws can be broken and further that they can be broken by some simple process. My proposal is that something rotates in the UFO and the centrifugal vectors are made to be non-coplanar with the rotation. If one could point these centrifugal vectors out of the plane of rotation, accelerations of 100 g's and more are easily realizable and the conservation laws are no longer an impediment because you are then violating them with impunity. One of the aspects of such a system of propulsion is that the weight of the rotating part should be as heavy as possible because it needs to propel the dead weight of the rest of the craft. And trace cases of UFO landings indicate that their mass density corresponds more to submarine densities than to a jet fighter or aircraft. I expect the craft itself to be made of the lightest, strongest materials and the propulsion system's rotational part to be as heavy as possible. To get the required vectors out of the plane of rotation requires some action to get them to shift. The things that one can do to accomplish this are extremely limited. We can subject the wheel to intense magnetic or electric fields and perhaps heat it or cool it to superconducting temperatures. That's all there is in this universe to operate on the wheel. If the foregoing doesn't do the trick, nothing else will, for we are then left with just wishing and clicking our heels together. A moving charged particle generates a magnetic field of its own such that two parallel wires with current flowing through them in the same direction are attracted to each other. We might envision the magnetic field of a current carrying wire as a kind of directional pressure as shown. Where the arrows cancel there is no pressure, so the wires are pushed together. When the currents are opposed, the pressure between is higher and the wires are repelled. A charged particle moving in a uniform magnetic field is similarly deflected at right angles to its direction of motion. It moves in the direction where the arrows cancel, that is the low magnetic pressure. The opposite charge will behave in the opposite way in the same magnetic field, since the magnetic field it generates is opposite. If a neutral particle disintegrates into positive and negative daughter particles, one will rotate clockwise and the other counterclockwise in the same magnetic field. They come to rest by giving up energy to whatever they interact with. Note here that as the particle rotates in the magnetic field, it produces its own magnetic field with a north and south pole as shown. If the rotation occurs in the middle of the external field, there will be no net motion up or down. However, if the particle is moving nearer one pole than the other, there will be a net up or down movement in the motion of the particle. Instead of a flat spiral, it will display a corkscrew shape. It is this property that I wish to take advantage of to rotate the centrifugal vector of a neutral particle out of the plane of rotation. Because a neutral particle is not affected by a magnetic field, I propose to mechanically rotate it in a magnetic field, closer to one pole of the magnetic field. Neutrons are then forced to pass their centrifugal vectors through a magnetic field, which is stronger in one direction up or down. Now, by present theory, nothing unusual should occur. So, at this point, I must speculate that the neutron will be, by virtue of its centrifugal vector, in a state of pre-disintegration into a proton-electron pair. It's not going to actually disintegrate, but rather stay in a constant state of partial disintegration, wherein the inside of the centrifugal force becomes a partial positive charge and the outside a partial negative charge. If the foregoing speculation is true by the standard model, 
One charge should be pushed away from the near magnetic pole and the other pulled toward it. And because the neutron has not disintegrated into separate particles, its vector field is still intact but skewed out of the plane of rotation. Here the force pushing the negative charge up is accompanied by a downward force on the external magnetic field and the positive charge is pushed down resulting in a net upward pull on the external field. These forces balance and are useless to the propulsion scheme. That effect is the result of the redirection of the overall field of the neutron out of the plane of rotation which leaves us with a net vector in complete violation of the law of linear momentum conservation. And if linear momentum conservation goes it necessarily follows that energy conservation goes with it because we could generate a constant acceleration with a constant power output for indefinite periods such as with a small nuclear reactor as the power source. It would not be necessary to push off on expelled matter to move forward. Our craft would gain kinetic energy proportional to the square of the velocity while inputting only a constant energy. We are no longer restricted by Tsiolkovsky's rocket equation. We get unlimited energy for a finite energy input, which is to say, something for nothing. The neutron is held in place by the nuclear force, so it can't go off on a tangent to its rotation. We have then vectors all over the place, all of which cancel out in the expected manner, except for the centrifugal vector, which should be out of the plane of rotation. One should also note that this cannot work on separate particles, regardless of their charge and motion in the field. It can only work in the case of a single particle kept in a state of pre-disintegration by a forced rotation in a magnetic field. Another component to the UFO puzzle is the anti-gravity effects reported by multiple eyewitnesses. UFOs can push or pull matter while hovering and apparently are able to use this effect to push air out of the way so as to cancel sonic boom. Such an anti-gravity effect would be something new and not yet observed by mainstream physicists. I proposed long ago that the gravitational fields of all particles rotate on an axis in the direction of motion. It is to be complementary to the magnetic field. If such is true, a strong magnetic field may also produce an analogous gravitational field. Positively charged particles should produce the opposite gravitational effect of negative particles, so that rotating neutral matter would produce no discernible effect. To discover such a gravitational field effect would require that a rotating disk have a current in it flowing in the opposite direction to the direction of rotation. The electron current will then have a supporting rather than a canceling gravitational component. But to achieve a large effect, the electron drift velocity must be drastically increased. To accomplish this, I propose that a superconducting fluid be rotated with a current in the opposite direction in the thinnest possible tube in order to constrict the degree of freedom of random electron movements in the current. This should also produce enormous magnetic fields that are characteristic of UFOs and are required by the reactionless propulsion system I've proposed. Now when the UFO takes off, the gravitational field produced by this effect can be redirected to pushing the occupants of the vehicle in the desired direction without harm and to push the air out of the way, canceling any sonic boom. This gravity effect is not the propulsion system itself, but rather a needed effect to facilitate a high rate of acceleration. You could use it to push off on the earth and move around, but it's not the primary system and would be completely useless as an interstellar propulsion mechanism because it would obey the conservation laws. We can then understand a UFO coming out of the water, making a bulge, then pulling water up as it ascends. The water is pushed, then pulled by the gravitational system, and the craft itself is moving upward reactionlessly by the primary drive system.